were working with uh, John, obviously, on the guard, and um, he told us that he came up with this, the first sort of grains of idea for Calvary while you were still on set at the end of the guard. Yeah, we went, for, we went for a drink at the end of a, uh, the, the, the Connemara section of the guard where we had a week or two to go uh, over in, in Wicklow, but Connemara is where the home of the movie is, and we were sad to leave. But we were having a good, we were having a, just a, a night out before we travelled the next day, and we had a chat about the this whole thing, which is, you know, it's obviously very current at home, has been for a while. And uh, I think there was an instance of uh, some priest who'd been for 14 months waiting for uh, a trial where it, 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 it turned out that he had been accused of paedophilia, which was, which was groundless. And the horror of that, not only committing to a life uh, from a sense of generosity, but then, then to have to carry that with you was kind of saying, God, it must be odd. I think John had had the, the notion of writing about a priest. Uh, he's a kind of a, he's encyclopedic in terms of film and stuff like that. And this was one of the, the, the images that he had in his head anyway. He said, if I write it, will you do it? So I said, yeah, so here we are. <laughs> Basically it was, you know, looking at the guard, I didn't want to sort of do the guard too. Um, so, so then I thought, well, what I tried to, I like winning awards. So I wanted to try to win more awards. And if you get heavy and dramatic, the critics give you more awards. <laughs> so that was the idea. And then I just, it's funny, I just started get. I hadn't watched a lot of, say, Ingmar Bergman when I was a kid. And so I started watching a lot of his films recently and you realise that, that those kinds of philosophical themes and thinking about life and death, it's quite rare now, you never see it anymore. It was quite current when he was doing it in the, I'd say, you know, mid to late 60s or whatever. So I just thought it's an opportunity to make something that would maybe be a bit more original and maybe surprise people. But I'd still want to have comedy all the way through it, though, as much as possible. Uh, I like working with um, comic people who are perceived as comic actors. Um, one, because they're good fun to be around, you know. Uh, they're good fun for a drink on a Friday night after you've been shooting all week. And they're kind of always, they're sort of underestimated in a way, as if doing comedy isn't acting. I don't know why that is, but that seems to be the case. So, you know, they're always looking for sort of meaty, dramatic sort of roles. Um, and they're, you know, they're enthusiastic if you give them the opportunity. I mean, specifically someone like Chris, I think that I sent him the script the following day, uh, he said he wanted to meet, and then we met the day after, and he said, yes, so in two days, I've got Chris. So that, yeah, they're looking for those sorts of parts. And yeah, you're just trying to wrong foot the audience, I guess, if you see Dylan Moran coming in riding a horse, you start laughing and then you start to realise his character's pretty, a pretty bleak, despairing man, you know, and you only get that as it's going along. So again, it's that thing of, you know, wrong foot in the audience, trying to be a bit more original. I mean, Pat Short, who plays the barman, is probably one of the most famous comedians in Ireland, you know, and he's playing a really aggressive Buddhist so it's just, yeah, it's just doing all that things. And, you know, they, they, they are fun to be around. And, of course, you have this one electric scene um, with your son, Donal. Can you talk to him about how it was filming that? Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Like, we obviously talked about it prior to it, but at some point, a week or a week and a half, um, he needed to do his thing. And, and uh, talking about it with me wasn't particularly helping uh, because he needed to go and, 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 and all that. And we did a reading prior to it, and we, that was good and fruitful. But about two or three days beforehand, we kind of stopped talking. <laughs> it's like we were lining up and we needed to be give each other space. And on the morning and uh, during the day of it, we didn't talk very much until, until the, you know, the heavy emotional lifting was done, really. So it was interesting. It was very professional in a way. Um, I mean, a great joy in retrospect and, and looking forward to doing it. But we had to tread carefully. Uh, and it was good. We kind of gave each other the, the adequate amount of support and the adequate amount of space. It kind of worked out very well. I mean, that's probably the heaviest scene I've ever written. It was quite a brooding scene to shoot as well. My brother actually, that was the day my brother was on set and he was watching it. He hadn't read the script and he uh, turned to me and said, um, I thought this was a comedy. Um, it, I was a little bit hesitant about that casting because, you know, you don't want the audience to suddenly be brought out of the film and go, oh, that's Brendan, that's Brendan's son. But I think, you know, we kind of screwed around with his hair and his look and everything. There was a few people I know have seen it and asked me who Donald was playing because I didn't recognise him. And of course, this is the second part of the Glorified Suicide uh, trilogy. So of course, yeah. What can we expect from the third part? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, he, an aggressive paraplegic he has, he has lined up, I think. Um, he has some idea of a man who was. Um, 
a, a cop who has been a cop and he wants to investigate the murder of his best friend and he hates society. <laughs> Sounds hilarious. It does when he tells it. We've done a policeman and a priest. The next one will be a, a, a very abusive paraplegic. So Brendan will be sort of uh, wheeling himself around South London, getting into lots of trouble. 